Well, hello there. Uh, been a long time since I've seen you. I've got some new books to talk to you about. Books that have come in while we've been doing the book fair and will be available sometime early next week. Um, I'm waiting for uh, a product, my, my tape that I like to put on the books that says new, okay? So let's start with some of these books that are on display up here. Way over here, we've got a book called I'm Hungry, Tengo Hambre. That book is both in English and Spanish, and it teaches you some Spanish. We've got Creepy Carrots by Aaron Reynolds. Same guy who did Creepy Pair of Underwear. Thought I heard someone coming in. We've got Vamanos. This book is in Spanish, and this book celebrates Mexican folk art, transport in English and Spanish. So kind of a really cool visual book here. Uh, it's, it's celebrating art. And let's see, what else can you see behind me? We've got uh, Cautionary Tales. That's a collection of short stories that are meant to be a little bit scary that feature Disney villains. Um, and on the far end, we've got Standing in the Need of Prayer, which is a modern retelling of the classic spiritual written by Carol Boston Weatherford, a uh, really great writer. Okay, let's see what else we've got. I'm gonna move the iPad so it's gonna get a little rocky here, okay? So let's see, over here, oh goodness, that's real rocky. Uh, we've got some Berenstein Bears books and a bunch of them. I'm not even gonna go through all the titles because we added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and we've got more on the way of these Berenstein Bears books. We added Bade the Cat. The youth librarian at Hearst Public Library loves that book, and I got to read it while I was working there, and it's fantastic. We've got down here, let's go a little further, we got a bunch of Splat the Cat books, and we got Kicks, which is a picture book that celebrates uh, shoes for your young sneakerhead. And then uh, let's look at some of these other books. I'm going to prop this back up here, and we'll pull out some of the individual books. We have How to Read, or excuse me, How to Read a Book by Newbery Medalist Kwame Alexander, and another book by him, which is How to Write a Poem. So this is an author who writes most of his novels in verse. Very good author. We've got. Mina, cute little mousy. We've got Chester Van Chime, who forgot how to rhyme. We've got Somewhere in the Bayou. We've got Perfectly Imperfect Mira. And one I was very excited about. Once versus Needs versus Robots by Michael Rex. This is the same author who did, um, oh, what was it? Uh, goodness, what was it? Fact versus Opinions versus Robots. Um, this book teaches about the difference between wants and needs in a fun way that includes robots. And we've got <clears throat> Creepy Crayon by the same author of Creepy Carrots and Creepy Pair of Underwear. So that's some of our books. And we're not done yet, still in just the picture books. I really do wanna show you guys, I love Bathe the Cat, but I really wanna show you, I love the art on this for kicks. My son's a little bit of a sneaker head, really fun book. Um, let's see, what else we've got? Where in the world are you? All right, continuing on, let's see what else we've got. We had Where in the World Are You? We have Endlessly Ever After. Really excited to have that one. Which, by the way, says Pick Your Path to Countless Fairy Tale Endings. We've got That's Not My Name. We've got Counting Two Bananas. We've got Love Violet. We've got The Pigeon Has to Go to School. They never have too many pigeon books and we did not have these, so The Pigeon Needs a Bath. And The Pigeon Will Ride the Roller Coaster. Then of course we also added 
Nuffle Bunny. Nuffle Bunny Free. Oh, that should have been the third one because we also have Nuffle Bunny 2. So Nuffle Bunny, Nuffle Bunny 2, and Nuffle Bunny Free. Oh, goodness. That's a heavy stack of books. Let's get these up here. And we are still nowhere near done. Let's talk about some graphic novels. We've got Long Distance. Um, when her parents decide it's time to pack up and leave her hometown of Portland, Oregon behind for boring Seattle, Washington, Vega is more than upset. She's downright miserable, forced to leave her one and only best friend, Haley, behind. Vega is convinced she'll never make another friend again. To help her settle into her new life in Seattle, her parents send Vega off to summer camp to meet new people. So, kind of goes from there. I don't want to say too much more, but fun little graphic novel. We've got... Who is Tibet's Exile Leader? This is some of the Who Is Who Was books. We've got land, a graphic novel from the Land of Stories, Goldilocks, Wanted Dead or Alive by Chris Colfer. And you're going to see we've got quite a bit. You're going to see we've got quite a bit of Land of Stories stuff. Uh, yummy. We actually had to replace our copy of this already, unfortunately. But So Yummy, A History of Desserts. So this is our replacement copy. Who was accused in the Salem Witch Trials? Um, Tituba, and this is again a who, who was, who is graphic novel. We've got a couple volumes of Baby Mouse that we are missing. Ba Baby Mouse, Queen of the World, and Baby Mouse goes for the gold. A couple of volumes of Lunch Lady graphic novels. Lunch Lady and the Cyborg Substitute and Lunch Lady and the School-Wide Scuffle. How about some Babysitter's Club graphic novels? We've got Mary Ann Saves the Day. And Mary Ann's Bad Luck Mystery. But we also have, we also have some of the Little Sister Babysitter graphic novels. So we have uh, Karen's Witch, Karen's Roller Skates, Karen's Worst Day, and Karen's Kitty Cat Club, and Karen's Birthday. Then, from uh, the same author of Wonder, we've got a graphic novel called White Bird, recently adapted to a movie. From Rick Riordan, we have the first two books of the Heroes of Olympus series in graphic novel form, The Last Hero and The Son of Neptune. We've also got the first two books of the Kane Chronicles series, Red Pyramid and Serpent's Shadow. We have The OK Witch and The OK Witch and the Hungry Shadow. We have a Goosebumps graphic novel that is Slappy's Tales of Horror. And a couple of the I Survive graphic novels, I Survive the American Revolution, and I Survive the Attack of the Grizzlies, 1967. All right, we've made it through our graphic novels. We're gonna slide on down. And we're going to talk about some other stuff. So I already talked about the Land of Stories series. There are six books in there in the series. And there's this giant treasury of classic fairy tales that's part of the Land of Stories. As well as this, the Mother Goose Diaries. So Land of Stories is a fun uh, middle grade fantasy collection written by Chris Colfer. 
Um, we also added a couple of our Last Kids of Earth on Earth books, Last Kids on Earth, Quint and Dirk's Hero Quest, and Last Kids on Earth and the Forbidden Fortress. Uh, we have a fiction book called Moonwalking, which uh, looks like a really great book. It kind of deals with art and music and um, one of the characters uh, feeling um, unseen. Um, they're very, very different characters, and I really love that. One of the characters, I believe, is autistic, which is um, wonderful to have that representation. We've got two copies of Free Water, which was a Coretta Scott King Award winner, <clears throat> excuse me, and a John Newberry Medal winner. Um, it took me a while to get this book in, the Newberry winner, Free Water. <clears throat> um, so, but we got two copies of that. We got A Kind of Spark. Uh, we have a replacement copy for The Red Pyramid, uh, the first book in the Kane Chronicles by Rick Riordan. And a new sort of connected book uh, called From the World of Percy Jackson, The Sun and the Star, a Nico D'Angelo adventure. We've got... The One and Only Ruby. This is the same uh, author as The One and Only Bob and The One and Only Ivan. We've got Angie Thomas's uh, middle grade fiction uh, fantasy debut. Um, so this, she's written a lot of young adult fiction, but this is her first middle grade. Nick Blake and the Remarkables, The Manifesto or Prophecy. All right, continuing on, we've got Nick Stone, Clean Getaway. Uh, again, from the author of Wonder, we've got Augie and Me, Three Wonder Stories. Uh, there's the Julian chapter, Pluto, and Shingling. Um, so if you've read Wonder, um, you'll probably really appreciate this book. We've got The, uh, the Beautiful Something Else. And we've got Nick Stone's Fast Pitch, which is a softball fiction book. And that brings us to the last shelf uh, that I haven't talked about, which is our nonfiction that came in. So let's start there. All right, took me a minute to get those books. So... We've got Counting in Dog Years and Other Sassy Math Poems. We've got A Seed Grows. And this one has won some awards here, you can see uh, right there on the, uh, on the front. We've got I Was Born a Baby. Um, so this book kind of looks at like how everything starts out, like how dogs start out as puppies and stuff like that. Um, we've got two copies of this. This is an award winner as well. Pizza, a slice of history. Uh, so this literally talks about, uh, the history of pizza and on the back. It says, do you, do you like pizza? Because right now someone in the world, so, somewhere in the world, someone is eating it. Did you know that in the United States we eat 350 slices of pizza every second or that in Sweden they serve pizza with bananas and peanuts all over the world. People love pizza, but where did it come from and who made the first pizza? Join award-winning author and illustrator Greg Pizzoli as he travels through time and around the globe to discovering the mouth-watering history of pizza. Bursting with color, flavor, and fun facts, Pizza, A Slice of History reveals the delicious story of the world's best food. So that'll be a fun one. We got two copies of that. We got A Child's Introduction to Jazz, the Musician's Culture, and Roots of the World's Coolest Music. And what's really cool about this book is there's a website listed in the front of the book and you go to that website and as you're reading the book, it'll tell you about a song and you get to listen to the song. So there's like 30 something songs in here that you can hear. So like, I'm just going to flip open and see where one mentions something. Let's see here. Here we go. Um, this one just says scan here and you and click on track 10 to hear an example of some cool jazz. And it's right below Miles Davis, so my guess is you're going to hear some Miles Davis. Miles Davis is pretty cool. All right, so next we've got Maya's song, 
Um, so this is about Maya Angelou, who is a world-renowned author, poet, cookbook author, um, just someone that means a lot to a lot of people. So a book about Maya Angelou. <clears throat> And then right after that, we've got a biography about Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul, by Carol Boston Weatherford. I really love Carol Boston Weatherford. She's fantastic. And then Solitary Animals, Introverts of the Wild. So if you are a lover of animals or you're an introvert and just enjoy kind of being by yourself, this would be a good book for you. I got another copy of Pizza down there. And then the last one to show you in the nonfiction is A Child's Introduction to the Orchestra. So again, this one has 30-something uh, different classical music selections that you get to hear. Starting at the very, very beginning, the very like first page, it has, or the second page, it says play track, nope, that's track three. I'm even further, I gotta go back into the introduction. Play track one to hear Wagner's Ride of the Valkyrie. That's the very first track, so very cool. I know that the Suzuki teachers uh, support this one, so. All right, guys, that is... All the new books, I'll say all the new books, but this is, we're still missing 20 books that came, that we ordered with this order. They'll be coming in soon, and I can't wait for you to see them. These are not quite ready for checkout yet, but I'll have them up as soon as possible.